gracious Father, we're grateful unto you for being able to lift our hands and say thank you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes. We're grateful unto you, dear Father, that despite all that we go through, we still have a heart and a mind to worship. And we want to say thank you. Now, Lord, anoint me with the anointing that makes preaching easy. Let this word be receptive, received by your people today. And in everything I say and everything I do, I take none of your glory. I take none of your honor. I take none of your praise. I, I will point everyone back to you. So even now, as I decrease, increase inside of me, dear Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Would you give it up for the worship and praise team? Amen. Real quick, turn with me to 3 John 1 and 2. 3 John 1 and 2. Some would they say 3 John 2 because John only got one chapter. <laughs> 3 John 1 and 2. A very familiar passage of scripture. When you have it, say amen. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou will prosper and be in health even as thou soul prospers. I'll say it again. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou will prosper and be in good health even as thou soul prospers. Would you look at your neighbor and tell them, stop tripping. You can do this. That neighbor ain't look at you, right? Look at your other neighbor and tell them, stop tripping. You can do this. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to try to bait this as expeditiously as possible this morning. Amen. I believe this passage of scripture should be the sentiment of all pastors who are truly pastors. If you're a pastor who's been called by God, you're a pastor after God's own heart, then you should want your parishioners to prosper, be in good health, and also their soul to prosper. My desire is that everybody here will go to heaven. I wouldn't want you to be sitting in LWC for all this time and then end up in hell. Uh, that's, not, that's not my desire for you. If you're going to hell, you might as well just go out there and party and just have a good time. Ain't no need to sit in here and go to hell. But if you're going to be here, I, I would want you to live for God and, and make it to heaven. So I would want you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and make him your God and your king. Put him in your heart so he can be everything. That, that's the last part of the scripture. If I can go in reverse of the scripture this morning. I'm going to take the last part and then go to the first. So he wants, he says your soul will prosper. So every pastor should want their parishioner's soul to prosper. And then I believe if you can have it, God can heal it. I just believe that. If you can have it, God can heal it. That's your health being, you being in good health. So if you can have it, God can heal it. If the devil want to put it on you, God can take it off you. I, I just believe that. And I believe prayer can do that. Then it comes to the other part. He says, I believe I want you to prosper. I want you to prosper. I was doing Facebook Live and I said prosperity was being able to handle what comes your way. But I want to add something else. Being able to handle what comes your way with the power of God. That's true prosperity. Being able to handle anything that comes your way with the power of God. Because some people can handle some things because they got some money. And some people handle some things because they got some education. But I want to be able to handle some things because I got the power of God. Because the power of God can conquer anything. And so as we're about to enter back into another school year, as we're about to come to the, actually I call this the last quarter of the year. I know physically it's not the last quarter because it's not October, November, December, but I added another month to the last quarter. Is that all right? Oh, that's the, that's like, is it was a Serena slam? That's the eating quarter, okay? All right, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's the four months, and I believe that in these four months, God wants us to prosper. He wants my young people to prosper. He wants the educators that we have here as partners to, pro, to prosper. But not only that, he wants you to prosper. He says in his word, you don't got to go there, but he says in John 14 and 12 that this is what he tells me. He tells me that you 
are going to be able to do the works I do and greater works. Hmm. You're going to be able to do the works I do and greater works. And, and everybody looks at miracles. You I mean, we're going to do the same miracles. But I look on different levels because Jesus was on multi-levels. He was able to talk to the politician as well as the bum. Somebody ought to help me this morning. He, he was able to talk to the rich man, the rich young you know, and also the man who was just a blue collar working, working. He was able to go on many different levels, and he said, you're going to do the same work I do, but greater works. So God is saying, wherever I have you at, wherever I planted you at, whatever I have you to do right now, I want you to do just as good as I did, but better. Isn't that the desire of every parent? They want their child to do better than they did so God is saying I want you to do better than I did and Jesus was talking to everybody so he doesn't leave anybody out whether you're corporate America or whether you're Burger King oh God it doesn't matter where you at God said wherever you at I want you to do better so I need you to stop tripping because you can do this I need you to stop tripping because you can do this you can do this. So he said, above measure, I, I, I want you to know that you're going to do the same works I do and then greater works than that. And how am I going to do that, God? Well, then he gives me John, 1 John 4 and 4. He says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So he said, you're not going to be able to do it on your own power and your own authority. I know you can't do it by yourself, but I got something on the inside of you. <laughs> and something on the inside of you is going to bubble up on the outside of you. And when you need it, it'll be there. When you need it, it'll be there. So let me hit my four points and be out. That was just my introduction. Can I hit my four points and be out? Since I know all that, then I need to have a change of mind. I need to have a change of mind. I need my mindset to change. What do I need to change to? My mindset needs to change to this. God wants me to prosper and succeed. God is going to help me prosper and succeed, and I will prosper and succeed. That's your mindset. That's the mindset you got to have. That's the mindset. I'm going to give it to you again. God wants me. See, that's the thing. Some people don't think God wants them to be successful. I know that's why I got silent in here. This is, this is, this is, this is sight one-on-one. Some people don't think God wants them to be successful. Let me break it a little deeper. Some people think he wants me to be all right in church, but he don't care about outside of church. Mm, Jesus. And, and the God I serve wants you to be successful all over because you represent him all over. When you're not in church and you're on your job or you're on the school campus, you still represent God. And God said, I want you to represent me well, so I need you to know I want you to prosper and be successful. But not only that, I'm going to help you prosper and be successful. But don't stop there. Then you got to declare, I will prosper and be successful. You got to change your mindset. You got to change your mindset. You got to know God wants you to do it. You got to go, you got to know God's going to help you do it. And then you got to declare you will do it. Because see, when you change your mindset, then you change your view of opportunity. That's my point number two. You change your view of opportunity. Anytime you think you can't do it, you limit your view of opportunity. And you don't try to do anything because you don't think you can do it. So you don't apply for the job because your, lim your view of opportunity is limited because your mindset is wrong. So you don't try to get the promotion. You don't try to go for whatever club that may be happening in school because you got this limited view of opportunity because your mind is limited. But when you change your mindset, then it changes your view of opportunity. And now you look at the view of opportunity and say, well, maybe I can do that. And maybe I can't do that. And maybe I can't do that. And maybe I can't go there. Because my mindset has changed. And when my mindset changed, my view of what I can do changes. My view of what it changes. See, some of y'all view changed when we took you to Florida. Because you never thought, how am I going to get to Florida? And then we took you there. You're like, well, we can come back. And if I can go to Florida, maybe I can go somewhere else. All you need is one opportunity to change, and you'll say, well, maybe I can do something different. So your mindset has to change. And when your mindset changes, it changes your view 
of opportunities. And when your view of opportunity changes, then your conversation with yourself changes, and then your conversation with others changes. Let me say it again. Your conversation with yourself, because you first got to talk to yourself before you can talk to somebody else. And so when your, when your view of opportunity changed, then you begin to talk to yourself. What do you mean, Pastor? Then you begin to say, well, I can do that. I can get that promotion. I can get that job. I can get all A's in school. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can make the honor roll in school. I can be. I can be this. I can be that. When your view of opportunity changes, then your conversation with yourself changes. And when your conversation with yourself changes, your conversation with everybody else changes. The reason why some of you can't talk to nobody else is because you don't know how to talk to yourself. Mm, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The reason why you can't talk to nobody else because you can't talk to yourself. You putting your own self down. Pastor, I'm not doing that. Every time you tell yourself you can't do it. It got quiet right there. Every, every, every time you tell yourself you can't do it. Every time you tell yourself you can't achieve. Every time you tell yourself it's too high for me. It's too big for me. I don't have enough education. I don't have this. I don't have that. I can't get the funding. That's when you put you down. But when you said my God can supply all my needs uh, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you tell God, God is an opportunity. Can I go? If you ask anything in the Father's name, he will do it. So some of you can't talk to others because you can't talk to yourself. See, we, before you go to an interview, you got to talk to yourself in the mirror. I am qualified for this job, and then I'm going to give myself the reason why I'm qualified for this job. I did this, and I did that, and I did See, if you could talk to yourself when well, you're sitting before the interviewer, oh, I'm trying to help somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this free. You got to go to seminars here. Am I right, Brother Nick? I'm giving this free. You got to go to seminars to get this. You, if you could talk to yourself. Because you got to anticipate what they're going to ask you so you're not caught off guard. <laughs> and you got to anticipate the devil's going to hit you so you're not caught off guard. <laughs> you got to know the devil's going to tell you you can't do it. You got to know he's going to try to tempt you and try you. You got to already see the enemy trying you. And you got to see yourself overcoming it. You got to talk to yourself yeah. before you can talk to others. I ain't, trying to be, I ain't trying to let you be cocky, but you need to be confident. Oh, God. Oh, God. You don't got to be cocky, but you got to be confident. I ain't walking in an interview bent over. Oh, God. I'm walking like it's already mine. You a little bit overconfident. I tell them I'm not overconfident. I'm just, I'm not over, I'm, I'm not big headed. I'm just confident in the God I serve because if you don't hire me, somebody will. Why is that? Because I'm just that good. <laughs> Why am I just that good? Because the God I serve made me that good. I'm not good on my own. Oh, somebody help me here. I'm not good on my own. The God I serve made me this good. The God I serve gave me these abilities. And the God I serve said, if I gave it to you, you might as well show it off. Yeah. And so you got to be able to talk to yourself. And that's why you can talk to others. I can preach to anybody. I can preach to one, think and joy, or I can preach to a thousand. You're not scared, Pastor? No, because if I can preach to myself in the mirror, with all the faces that myself make at myself, I can preach to y'all. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why you got to be, when you're able to talk to yourself, you're able to talk to others. So when your mindset changes, your view of opportunity changes, and when your view of opportunity changes, your conversation with yourself changes, and then your conversation with others changes, can I hit point number four and get out of here? Then what you receive, don't receive everything that everybody got to give you. You change what you receive because everybody don't got what I need. Well, you, you just can't get that job. I don't receive what you got, so leave me alone. I change what I receive, even, can I get you this, even from the devil. When the devil is trying to tell me, God ain't going to come and rescue you out of this. When the devil trying to tell me, you can't do this. And when the devil trying to tell me, you can't do that, I don't receive that. And anything you don't receive, you return to sender. Oh, God. So, so if you don't want me to return nothing to you, don't give me nothing there. Oh, God, I'm going to leave somebody alone. I, I ain't trying to be big-headed. I ain't trying to hurt your feelings. I ain't trying to do all that. But some stuff I'm not taking from you because it's not me. If you ain't calling me by my name, don't call me at all. 
Oh, God. <laughs> Don't call me at all because my name ain't broke. My name ain't disgusted. My name ain't unemployed. My name is none of that. My name is it's just about to happen. I don't have it now, but I'm about to get it. It may not be working out now, but I'm about to have it. You got to know your name. And too many of us let the devil call us by the wrong name and you answer him. None of my, call, none of my kids call me by my name and I turn around. None of them call me by my name and I turn around. And some, some of my grandkids, they don't say, yes, sir, I don't answer. Because you got to know who you are. You just mean, Pastor. You, no, I'm just confident in who I am. And guess what? When you're confident in who you are, when everybody comes around you, they change because of you. Oh, God. You don't believe me? I think I have, what, I got nine grandchildren? I got so many. All of them change when I come in the room. Ask first lady. All of them change when I come in the room. Why? Because they know who I am. Because I know who I am. And then I make them know who they are. Oh, God. We're going to hang with granddaddy. All of them. We're going to hang with granddaddy. We got it going on there. We're going to hang with granddaddy. You got to change what you receive. Because everybody don't got your best interest at heart. But can I go a little bit deeper? Some people just don't know what to call you. Come on, sir. Some people just don't know what to call you. And so they're giving you a name. Are you going to receive it? They're giving you a name. If that's not your name, why are you answering? I got, I got six kids, and sometimes, y'all, I'm not getting old, but I'm getting older. And, and sometimes I'll call Olivia by somebody else's name, and Olivia don't answer. And know why she don't answer? Because that's not her name. <laughs> so I'm calling, she don't move. Why she ain't moving? That's not her name. But when I call her name, she answers. So why is it God has given you a name and you're answering to another name that God didn't give you? God didn't give you that name, so why are you answering it to it? Because once you answer to it, you accept it. And once you accept it, it's yours. And I'm not going to answer to something that's not me. And you shouldn't answer to something they not you. You're not going to answer to that. I got some nephews. I got some grandchildren. I got some all kinds of things. And people are trying, well, they just need to be this. And they're just bad. And I would say, no, they're just bored. See, teachers don't want to hear that sometimes. <laughs> they, want you, they want to name him. And I said, no, this is just bored. What do you mean he's just bored? He, he's so smart that he gets bored with what you give him so quick. It's not that he's bad. It's just that you can't keep up with him. Oh, God, you can't help me. And you got to rename what people are trying to name you. So I'm trying to tell you, if you're going to really educate him, you need to give him more than enough because he's going to get your stuff done a lot quicker than you think. So he's, he's not being uh, out of order. He's just bored. I hear the enemy is trying to name you, using your loved ones to name you something that you ain't. <laughs> See, if an enemy come and try to name you, you don't accept it. But somebody who's close to you try to name you something in a casual conversation. Isn't that what he did to the, isn't that what he did in the, isn't that what he did in the garden? In a casual conversation with Eve, he said, will you surely die? And in a casual conversation with your loved ones, they're naming you something you're not. And it's so casual that you're not picking it up. And you heard the Holy Ghost go in, excited on the inside, and you're not picking it up. And you say, well, they, they ain't mean nothing by it. No, yes, they did. It's a casual conversation that's trying to take you out. You even got to watch the casual conversations. Because it's the casual conversation that got us in trouble like this. Because Eve was having a casual conversation with a serpent that wasn't supposed to be talking with her. And that's how we got in the boat we're in now, for a casual conversation. <laughs> I, I, won't, I, don't, I, want you to, I want you to, I want you to incriminate yourself, but how many of you got in trouble over a casual? <laughs> oh, God. I, it was, I was just having a casual conversation. Yeah, and what happened after the casual conversation? See, in a casual conversation, you let your 
God down. And when you let your God down, everything comes in. It was a casual, oh God. I'm trying to help somebody in here. It was a casual conversation that took you out. It was a casual conversation that took you down. It was a casual conversation. They had you stuck for 18 years. Let me get out of here. It was a casual conversation. I know I'm preaching better than they said amen right now. It was a casual conversation. And I'm trying to help all my young people. Don't have no casual conversation. Trying to help my, all my young, trying to help all my young ladies. Don't have no casual conversation. Because can I tell you about guys? I'm going to give you this. I can't give them all of them, Joe, but I'm going to give them this one secret. It ain't casual to them. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay. Somebody ought to cut that. It's not casual to them. You think you're having a casual conversation. They got an agenda conversation, and you having a casual conversation, and they check it off their agenda, and you think it's casual. And when, the, when Eve thought, I'm going to take you back to the Bible. When Eve thought she was having a casual conversation, she didn't know it was Satan's agenda. And while you having a casual conversation, you don't know they got an agenda. So even in a casual conversation, I'm not going to let you call me something that I'm not. Because I'm not going to receive it. You can call me uppity. You can call me anything you want. But I'm not going to receive what's not mine. Look at his neighbor tell him, stop tripping. You can handle this. Rest of your feet all over the place. I'm done. I told you I had to quit this thing quick.